Tram intersections in city skylines by default look really bad, mostly because of the low corner radii, so vehicles move through the tight curves super unrealistically. But also the wires don't look all that great either. In this video I will show you how to first improve the tracks, which is really easy, but then I will dive into the wire situation, which can be improved with some advanced detailing and a bit of patience. Let's go. So the tracks themselves, we can easily improve that with the node controller. Simply click uh, with the node controller the node and I'm just going to increase the corner offset to something like uh, 25 would probably be the minimum. If you have the space you can easily go higher, especially on like bigger roads. But this is it. But this unfortunately creates the issue with the wires because of course the wires are just going to go straight between the catenaries at the start of the junction, which means that they are just going to go off these curves and that is looking really terrible. Unfortunately, there is no way we can change this in the, well, in the vanilla game, definitely not, but uh, even these kinds of wires, there is nothing we can do with them. So we need to get rid of them and detail in our own, with their own catenaries customized to the shape of the intersection. So the first step is to get rid of the wires. We can easily do that with the network skins mod. I'm just going to click uh, the road like this, going to select it with the mod. Then I'm going to go into the catenaries, select none, and I'm going to upgrade the segments that are going into the intersection. And that's it. Now I just got rid of the wires. Now, what kind of wires can I replace that with? And we have a couple of options in here. These are the wires that I have been using to create custom wires over tram tracks. I'm sure there are more in the workshop, but these are the ones that I have been using and I have experience with. So back in the day, the only option was to use the railway uh, wires. Now these particular wires are from the railway collection, uh, from the pack of decorative networks, I think. It's all gonna be linked in the video description as always. Now these are the double variants, but there is also the single variant. As you can see, it's exactly the same wires as over the railway. Way. Now, these kinds of wires back in the day had a really big disadvantage and that was the fact that they were slightly wider than the wires over the actual vanilla tram tracks. Now this is easily solved today because we have node controller and the value of 75% uh, for the stretching slider is exactly the value that you need to do. So I'm just quickly going to do that on the second half of the segment. Now, you can see in here that uh, these wires don't match uh, anyway, but that's because these, uh, these custom wires, they don't sway in the wind, just like uh, the vanilla wires do. But that's a bit of a problem that I'm going to talk about uh, later. And also the heights are not exactly matched. But again, I'm going to talk about that later. Anyway, the second option from the workshop for the wires are these uh, PEVEX made networks. Now, they come with these inserts, but they also can be downloaded separately, just the cables. Now, both of these and the railway wires have a huge advantage of being thin, unlike the vanilla wires. You can see that the vanilla wires are kind of unrealistically big, right? But uh, these don't, these, these don't have that. So these are very, very nice. Now, the ones with the inserts, by the way, these are already roads, so that's a slight disadvantage. If you have like a cluttered intersection with all kinds of networks on it, it might be a bit of a problem, but uh, but yeah, it's, you know, it can, it's manageable. It's manageable with the picker, for example, and stuff like that. But uh, definitely with the tracks uh, filter for the actual track wires, that's much, much better. Anyway, these kinds of inserts, they are very nice in a way that you can do the stuff on the ground. You can use them purely, sec purely, purely uh, decoratively and uh, it's just going to be covering your own tracks, for example, functional tracks, and it's always going to have the wire on top of it. So that's one way. But you can also just get the, the wire, you know, separately if you don't want to have actual uh, cobblestone or asphalt or whatever uh, insert uh, in place. Now, a slightly unconventional way of obtaining another set of wires can be by simply extracting them from existing networks. So these two examples, the double wires and the single wire in here, these are extracted from the Clusis LRT light rail uh, tracks. Now, these are, these are the tracks that I'm talking about. You can download them from the workshop. And the only thing I did is I very quickly uploaded it into or opened it in the uh, road editor, in uh, the asset, uh, asset editor, and I just deleted the tracks, models of the tracks, the road, the catenaries, everything, and uh, all that was left are the wires. So that's one way of doing it. A huge advantage of these is that uh, they are also swaying in the wind, so these can be nicely paired with the wires that the vanilla game uses. But I'm gonna talk about that uh, later when I'm going to do examples. 
Now, when you are trying to do these kinds of extractions, you only need to do it, you can only do it from the roads where the catenaries are props or somehow disconnected from the track. So, for example, these are the vanilla tracks. And the catenary cables, these triangles, as you can see, they are moving together with the wires because they are the same model. So if you were to just get rid of the model of the road, the poles, then you are still going to end up with these triangles, which are going to define the positions of the poles anyway. So these are not very good candidates for like custom wires because, well, they are already uh, kind of made to fit specific roads, right? But these are not, these are just the straight wires. So that's one possibility. And no, I'm not going to upload these into the workshop because obviously they are not mine. And you can easily extract it in the road editor uh, from these existing networks. Now I'm going to quickly show you the basics of the practical process of putting the wires on your intersection. So I'm just going to, for example, select the railway wires uh, just because they are very thin and I really, really like how they look in, uh, in, these, in these situations. So I'm just going to pick one segment, going to copy it into position. Now, uh, one thing that I really like doing at first is uh, to basically get the idea how many bends of the wires I need so that it's all going to go over the uh, the tracks, the existing tracks. I'm just going to uh, position it so that it goes on the, on the edges of the intersection, basically where the switches are going to start. And then I'm kind of going to, with move it, uh, bend it into the tracks. As you can see, all of these wires, they are always going to have a single bend per segment, right? So now we are basically going to have like two sub segments of these uh, wires. It's really hard to see in the video, probably, uh, definitely if you are watching this on mobile because the wires are just so thin, but uh, you know, this is kind of like a detailing thing anyway. So yeah, they are going to have this uh, single bend. And as we can see, it's not enough because it's not covering all of, all of this curve. So what I would do in this situation, and by the way, this is exactly what I was talking about. The track filter is coming very handy in this situation. So I would just put it uh, oh, I'm just over the grass in here outside the intersection. I would use the network multi-tool, uh, the add node mode, and I'm just going to add another node right in the center. And now I'm just going to have four sub segments of the wires. I would put it into the intersection and I would see that uh, this is pretty much looking okay. Now a quick note, I usually don't like uh, doing uh, multiple connected segments of these wires. But if you do have that, then make sure with the node controller that uh, it's, it's very difficult to select by the way when it's already over the tracks, make sure that it's the nodeless variant because the custom is going to not have the wires go exactly to the node, as you can see, even with the zero corner offset. So it's much better to use the nodeless variant. But if you do have the nodeless variant, then if you don't have aligned with move it, you don't have aligned the segments, then for example, like, uh, like this or something, then uh, by the way, it might switch back into the different uh, node type. So definitely make sure that you click it uh, nodeless again there. I'm, I'm sure that uh, then it's not going to switch back to it. Yeah, yeah, now it's set. Then sometimes you might have these wires disconnected as you can see, right? So the only way to get rid of that is to actually hold Alt when doing these kinds of segment changes with Move It so that uh, it's going to be connected with, uh, with the tangent lines. They're going to be exactly uh, parallel, right? So that's one thing that you need to do. Anyway, this is like the very basic concept of uh, doing uh, the wires over uh, curves. So you probably get the idea. So I'm just quickly going to populate the entire intersection and then we're going to continue. Also, these kinds of connections, these kinds of sharp connections at the edges of the intersection, they might sometimes look like they're disconnected. This is because the tangent lines of the move it, as you can see, these kinds of uh, two segments in here, they need to exactly match and they don't quite match, but you really need to fiddle with that uh, kind of uh, precisely so that they do. So doing these kinds of small, small tweaks. And as you can see, that's going to improve these corners greatly. Now, I also didn't do the straight connections because I wanted to show you one more thing. So the straight connections, I would just copy paste one segment like this, straighten it. And this is very powerful, by the way. So I would just hold uh, Alt by move when moving this end node and I would just snap it nicely to the end of all these curved wires, right? And I would do that exactly the same way over here. And it's exactly going to be at that position. As you can see, all of these three wires are now originating in one point. 
Okay, so now we have the wires done over the entire intersection, but they are obviously just hanging in the air. So we need to provide some kind of holders, some kind of catenaries. And the easiest way is to actually, with these particular railway wires, is to use the single variant of the railway wires and uh, use that. So I'm just going to put it, uh, for example, here. Doesn't matter, single segment, by the way. Then I'm going to create uh, some kind of poles for it. So I'm just going to pick uh, the vanilla... Uh, railway or sorry the tram uh, tracks uh, tram wires pole this one and I'm just going to fiddle with it so that it goes exactly inside the wires just like on the ends like that I'm going to hold control while moving it with move it so that the outline is the colored outline is going to go away and I'm going to exactly see it now it's going to be very important to always have props and nodes both selected so that when I have the end, I'm just going to move the end of the wire with, uh, with the pole as well, okay? And I would just uh, pick, uh, pick this one and I would just quickly copy paste it everywhere I want it to go. And uh, then I would do the actual you know, tweaks so that it would go where it needs to be precisely. Now. This uh, this custom catenary position, it has a huge advantage because now you can you don't need to actually have these poles. So, for example, if you are creating some kind of a city center of like a European, old European city, you might easily make the wires go inside the buildings so that it's going to appear as if there are some kind of attachments on the sides of the buildings, which is very realistic. And it's just going to allow you not to have that much stuff on the streets with the poles absolutely everywhere, right? So this is like a big customization option that you can do. And now I would just go over the intersection and I would make sure that I select both the ends and the props, the poles of these catenaries, and I would just make them go where I want them to. So at the start of this intersection, this one is going to be straightforward because just, just a, that's just a very simple catenary here. But in the rest of the intersection, it's going to be a lot more complicated, but this is kind of the magic of the customization because in the vanilla game, you obviously have the catenary as uh, two poles and some kind of wire between them, right? That's the standard thing. But uh, you can really play around with this and make sure that you, for example, have... Let me quickly try this. So you have the pole, I don't know, somewhere over here. And by holding Alt, I can actually make all these different wires kind of radiate from it, right? So I can, for example, have just a single pole for, as you can see, I'm just moving it together with these three ends of the wires. And I can have it like this, and then the rest of these uh, ends are just going to go somewhere, you know, off, uh, off uh, into the distance, and are, are going to just hold the cables. Now, it's really important in this situation to make sure that these catenaries go into the bends of the wires over the tracks. And this is really, really tricky. This is not easy at all, because especially if the intersection is not uh, like 90 degree corners, it's not going to be symmetrical, then the bends are going to appear in different positions. So if you are not okay with that, for example, for some kind of uh, first person rides or some kind of really beautiful screenshots or something, then you really need to use the single wire versions over the individual tracks. And then you also need to make sure that you have the bands kind of aligned so that you can, you know, do these kinds of catenaries. Or you can do all kinds of different things that you see in real life. You have, for example, some supporting cables running uh, parallel to the actual power cables and then ser uh, serving as some kind of supports with different bands. You know, there are many, many different styles in real life. So I highly encourage that you actually, you know, take a look at some real life pictures and just do the wires uh, so that they are going to look like in real life. Because this is kind of the point of the technique. You are trying to create it as, uh, you know, as it would be done in real life. Now, by the way, I for completely forgot. I made a slight mistake in here. And the mistake is that I did not set with the node controller the widths of these wires. So I would now have to do it inside the intersection, which is slightly inconvenient. But uh, yeah, I would need to go and do that 75% stretching so the wires would actually go over the tracks. Now, since we also destroyed the wires over those segments that are leading towards the intersection, we need to make sure that uh, they are they are there as well. So I'm just going to take uh, like a random segment from the intersection by holding alt I'm going to make sure that it's snapped to the edges of those wires in the intersection and then I'm just going to make it go uh, to the place where it needs to connect and there is the problem 
So first of all, we don't have the wires at exactly the same heights. So what I would do in this situation is, if I have it completely on a flat ground, I would just select all of these nodes, even with the catenaries. I would make sure that they are going to go to the same height and uh, then I would just uh, make them go down. So this is kind of like a, like a flat ground approach. If I didn't have flat ground, and I would unfortunately need to go just uh, node by node and usually just take a, taking a look at, the, uh, at the, uh, the collectors of the trams and seeing if they are actually touching the wires, you know. But definitely make sure that the wires are going to touch the original wires. But they can't touch the original wires because the original wires are swaying in the wind. So if you're going to pause the game, align it, unpause it, then it's just going to move away and uh, you're not going to see it there. So one way of doing this is basically just pausing the game and aligning it kind of in the middle of the swing, definitely not at the end because that's just going to make the wires go weird. You know, every time you unpause, they are just going to be aligned at one point. So kind of make sure that you're going to pause the game in the middle of the swing and align it there. But that's kind of weird, isn't it? So this is where, for example, these kinds of extracted wires that I, that I talked about, they are very handy because this swaying is actually exactly the same everywhere on the map. Let me show you what I mean. So if I, for example, take those wires and I align them to the already existing wires, for example, uh, something like this, right? Then uh, look at that. They are immediately going to have exactly the same swing. That's like a nice thing, nice feature of these wires in the game. So you can easily just uh, use these extracted wires over these intersections, but there is the slight dis disadvantage because they are much bigger. Now, if you really, really wanted to, you might simply convert your entire tram network into custom wires. And these days, it's actually much easier than it might, uh, it might seem. And again, back in the day, you would have to put manually on each segment your own wires and it would take a long time and I don't think I would have the patience for it. But you now have the Network Multi tool and you probably know where this is going because there is the parallel mode and you can now easily, by the way, before you do that, you need to make sure that with Find It, you do click the railway wires, for example, or any kind of wires that you want. And then you're going to go into the Network Multi-Tool Parallel Mode. You're going to select, uh, you know, some bigger segments of your network. You cannot really do it all in once, obviously, between intersections, for example. You can do it. And uh, you are simply going to make it so that the offset is going to be a zero. So I'm just going to press uh, uh, the, you know, the buttons that are here shown in the, in the tooltip. And then I can also change the heights because uh, now the Parallel Tool has the height. So I would just pause the game. I would just go into a look. I would just take a look at the tram, the collector, how it's looking, and uh, let's see. I would just move this up and down. Obviously, doing holding all the shortcuts that we have. Uh, no, not that one. Sorry. Where did I move those wires? Oh, slightly higher. Yeah, yeah. Not shift. Not shift. Shift goes to underground, but uh, uh, control and uh, alt. Oh yeah, alt. That's going to give you that very fine movements. There we go. And I'm just going to hit enter once. And look at that. I now have the wires exactly where they need to be. Unfortunately, these are now built with, uh, you know, with those uh, bigger offsets. So I would have to actually go and uh, do those changes uh, with uh, the uh, with the node controller, which might be a bit fiddly because it's now over an existing network. So, you know, how to exactly select uh, the uh, the wires, but uh, you know it is possible if you really wanted to you might for example go segment by segment again Just uh, move it outside like this either the road or the wires doesn't matter Do the changes that you need to do so 75 like this on both ends or obviously segments or the nodes Not really the segments because that would be faster and then just with move it hit control Z and put it back now Unfortunately, you will have to do the manual catenaries but, uh, you know, it's like a small price to pay to having uh, these kinds of uh, custom wires. So obviously the point of uh, just converting these wires into your custom ones is that even on the intersections, they are going to match. 
So the intersections are going to have some wires, but even the segments are going to have the same. So they are not going to be any kind of weird transitions between the vanilla wires that are just moving in the wind, which is, you know, on its own kind of unrealistic. Wires really don't move this much in real life. So that's just going to be much, much better. And you don't even need to use this technique for the poles. So for example, I showed you uh, Pevex's tracks, uh, wires and inserts, but uh, she also made these uh, very nice looking, I think, masts they are called, but you can easily easily use, for example, the LRT uh, masts, uh, as you can see here, all if you are building some kind of old city, you can easily just use these. These are kind of intended for like a single wire configuration, uh, not these uh, like stacked wires, but you know, it's gonna be fine. But what you can actually do is, for example, take it as procedural object, you know, change it however you want, then group it with procedural objects if you made it using more objects and so on and so on, copy paste it into different locations and you probably get the idea. This is obviously a highly advanced thing, but uh, if you want to get uh, those wires just right over the intersections, then uh, this is definitely going to pay off. Now also the customized catenaries, they really shine in some kind of tram loops. So I have an example over here. I didn't bother with the rest of the wires, but I'm just going to show you this. So this is something that you can see in real life and uh, it's looking really cool in the game as well. So I would just take uh, this like a template of the catenary that I prepared before. So with the two poles and the wire stretched between them, and uh, I would just copy paste it a couple of times. You probably understand where this is going. I would be just holding Alt when doing the copy pasting. So I would make sure that uh, all of these are going to go into a single position. It might be a bit fiddly because uh, the wires might be trying to snap somewhere else. But uh, yeah, you would just do this and then super easily just uh, make sure that all the wires are just, uh, all the catenaries are just going into the bends. Using this technique, you are going to really greatly save on uh, on just the visual clutter of the area because you would otherwise have to have uh, all the poles like absolutely everywhere on the inside. Now you can just have only a single one. But this sharing of poles doesn't apply just to these kinds of loops, but also some situations where you might have, I don't know, some kind of tracks running almost parallel, I don't know, something like this, uh, getting uh, ready to just uh, go into some kind of intersection or something like that. And uh, there you can easily use that uh, too. So I would just copy paste uh, one of these, uh, what is that, a track, I uh, had it wrong. I would just copy paste it like this. And I might, for example, have the catenaries like this. So they would be sharing that uh, that middle node and the pole. So again, I would just be saving on the number of poles and it would be looking, you know, better. Also, one thing that I could do, this is actually not really that common in real life, but you can definitely do that. You can, for example, don't have these masts, but you can actually have street lights instead of them. So you are just going to, uh, how they are called, street? Uh, yeah, yeah. You can, uh, because they are looking, by the way, very, very similar in the vanilla game. So you can easily just use those instead and, uh, you know, save even more on these kinds of props uh, on the sides of roads. So this might be really something that you can play with. Now, I obviously understand that this is like a highly advanced technique. Uh, it takes a long time to set these wires up, but not really, actually. If you if you just use the network multi-tool, all these, you know, modern tools that we have at our disposal nowadays, then it's actually kind of like a straightforward process that uh, doesn't take that long. And definitely the results are worth it. I mean, not exactly this mess that I quickly whipped up in here, but uh, like I mentioned before, if you are going to take a look at real life uh, wires, catenaries, then you can definitely take some inspiration there and uh, just build it how you want it in your city, because that's the entire point of detailing, to customize uh, everything in your city to your liking. All right, so these were just a couple of tips on how to get started with this, but uh, it's up to you to use it and uh, make it look good. Anyway, guys, that's going to be all for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, then you can definitely help the video, help the channel by clicking the thumbs up below the video. You can leave some comments, share the video if you think someone else might like it too. And you can also support the channel directly by becoming a channel member, either through the join button below or the link in the description. Thanks again for watching. Take care and goodbye.